Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and I wanted to talk to you about the issue that has come up recently about Apple slowing down your phones over the years. Now, this has long been suspected or rumored, and people thought that maybe they slowed it down to get you to buy a new phone, or basically what they call planned obsolescence. But as opposed to what we thought, Apple has come out and said, yes, they slow them down, but the goal is to preserve your phone and its battery life, not cause you to buy a new phone. Now that's actually questionable, I think, for a lot of people, but I wanted to talk more about this as a lot of you were asking me to. And the main issue is with older phones, and what we have here is an iPhone 6 and a 6 Plus. And this one's running iOS 9, and this one is running iOS 10. And what Apple has said is starting last year with iOS 10, that they started to slow down phones to prevent them from restarting due to battery degradation. So as your battery ages and you use it over and over, it starts to lose its full capacity. So if your battery is a 1000 milliamp hour battery, after about a year or so, you may have lost 10 to 20% of that. After you get past that 20% mark, you'll need to actually slow down the processor so it doesn't drain it so much that it causes the phone to reboot. This seems to be an iPhone issue. We haven't really heard about anything as far as Android goes, but basically a year or so ago, people were having issues with their iPhone 6s rebooting and 6s with bad batteries. So in order to fix that, Apple implemented this change. Now with this particular version of iOS, iOS 10, what we should see is throttling of the processor if we run Geekbench. Some people with on Reddit and Geekbench actually figured this out. And then Apple finally commented to places like The Verge and TechCrunch and all sorts of other places. And Apple came out and said that because there's peaks in the processor when it's actually using a lot of power, it could cause those unexpected shutdowns. So they've implemented this feature, as they call it, even to the iPhone 7 with iOS 11.2. However, if this is a feature that they only use on one-year-old phones and not iPhone 8, why wouldn't you implement it all the time? It's kind of a questionable thing. But let's take a look at what they mean exactly. So if we go into the battery life, this is an app I found. You go into this battery life app. Let's go back to the wear level. And you'll see that this one has 30%, 31% battery wear. This one has very little. And the reason for that is this phone right before it was one year old, had some issues, and Apple replaced the whole phone for me, so it has a brand new battery. It hasn't been used much since then. This one was used for two years straight and then some until it was finally upgraded to an iPhone 7. So if we look at the wear level here, at the raw data, we'll go here and see the raw data, you can see here that this has a total capacity of 1,751 milliamp hours. However, the battery has degraded so that it will only charge to 1,200 milliamp hours total. So we've lost about 31% of its original capacity. So because of that, supposedly, if you've got heavy processor drain on it, maybe you're playing a game that requires a lot of power, it might cause this phone to reboot. And they want to prevent that. That's what Apple's saying. Now on this one, you'll see the battery app looks a little bit different because it's iOS 9, but it's the same information. Here you'll see the capacity is 2,855 milliamp hours. We're at 2771, so we've got 97% of our battery left. If I look on newer phones like the iPhone 10, we're still at 100% since it came out. So what that means is, even though these have the same processors in them, if we run benchmarks on them, this one should be much less than this one, regardless of of the battery state because this one is when they started implementing it. This one has a new battery. So let's take a look and see if we get similar results or if this one is way worse. So you can see iPhone 6, iOS 10, iOS 9.3.2, Apple A8 at 1.4 gigahertz. And let's see what the CPU benchmarks show. Now, as expected, this benchmark finished more quickly, and that's because the processor is not being throttled to run through these benchmarks. So I would expect the processor on the iPhone 6 with the, the lower battery capacity to actually be slower in completing these tasks. So it's finally finished, and you're going to see a much different multi-core score here. 
So as you can see, we have 1426 on the left and 2686 on the right for multi-core score. The single core seems to be very similar, 1500 versus 1577. And what Apple would say is they're doing that to smooth that out so your phone doesn't reboot when it's under heavy load. It started to get a little bit warm, so it's going to smooth that out so it doesn't drain the battery so much that it reboots. But really, what we're seeing here is a slowdown over time of the older devices. Now, what Apple should do about this is one of two things, either give you the choice not to slow it down. I highly doubt they'll do that, but they should give you a cheap battery replacement. Bring it in. We'll swap the battery for $50 as opposed to $80 or whatever they charge now maybe even less than 50, maybe $25. I'm not sure what the battery actually costs to manufacture and what it would cost them to spend their time swapping it for you. But basically you shouldn't have to have a slower phone one year later, just because it's older and the battery is degraded. So they need to do something along those lines, let you know that it's degraded enough. So it needs to slow down and you need to replace your battery and recycle the old one, or they need to just give you the option the the battery replacement seems like a good option to me and it's not that hard to do if you've ever done one of these now what apple has said is they implemented the slowdown on the iphone 7 plus with ios 11.2 so this device is not on 11.2 it's on 11.1 so it's much faster than if i switched it to 11.2 and if the battery was degraded so if i see the battery life here this one is at 97% of its original capacity after one year of use. So that's pretty good. I really have no issues with this particular device. But when it comes to these older devices, it's pretty sad to say that this one is much slower because the battery is, is used up after two years of use. So hopefully we see some sort of response. There's already people that have brought up lawsuits against Apple for this. So hopefully we see a, a fair response from Apple that will help people out that don't want to upgrade every year or can't afford to upgrade every year, or really in reality, we shouldn't have to upgrade every year. So let me know your thoughts about it though, in the comments below, what do you think Apple should do? And what are you going to do about it yourself? Are you going to replace a battery? Maybe switch to Android. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it too, in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like, as always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.